Welcome back. It's still the U45 morning show, and it is the sports segment that runs up these fantastic morning shows that keep you abreast with all information in all endeavors of life. It's still the period of COVID-19. The coronavirus is still hitting very hard, and the social distancing campaign is still on. Wash your hands. Don't touch your nose. Don't touch your eyes. We have to stay safe. This morning, we'll be looking at very important issues as it concerns the world of coronavirus. Mikel Obi is doing so much to enhance his status out there, giving out to those who he thinks uh, deserve it. Also, we'll take a review. Is the 1994 set the very best set of Super Eagles we've gotten. And the MPFS says they would conclude the league in eight weeks after the coronavirus is uh, called and that's preceding the lockdown. And also, we'll take a very quick look at what is happening around the world of sports and other tidbits. My name is Prince Will of Yusuf signing in this morning. I do hope you had a splendid, wonderful weekend. I'm not alone in the studio. I have, as usual, the guest analysts who will give you the tits and bits of what we'll be discussing this morning. In here with me this morning is Dr. Agubadi. Dr. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Principal. It's a good day. Though COVID actually is really affecting us, everyone in the world, but we believe that in no time we are going to actually overcome this. All right, Dr. is optimistic this morning that COVID-19 will be a thing of the past, just like some men of God have been prophesying about it going and we also joining me this morning in the studio is another person than dwell market good morning good morning friends it's good to be here good weather great day i'll talk sports thank you all right good morning good morning from my guest and uh pond is right here in the studio we'll go on this break when we come back we'll be taking uh the tidbits in the world of sport that is the news we'll be back Reports gets even better with Super Screen TV. Stand a chance of winning recharge cards for your efforts. Send videos and accompanying description to this WhatsApp line on 0811-1776-314. Viewers can send footages of newsworthy items, breaking news, and other events, and have it featured on Super Screen. Welcome back. Let's take you straight into the world of news around the um, sports world. Uh, right here in Nigeria, the minister commensurate with family of late weightlifting president Mohammed. The minister of youth and sports development, Mr. Sunday Dari, has commensurate with the family of the late president of Nigerian Weightlifting Federation, Mr. Yahaya Mohammed, who died on Saturday in Kano until his death. Mohammed was also the special assistant to Jigawa State Governor Mohammed Badaru on House of Assembly matters. Away from that, let's go to boxing where Joshua shortlists six fighters he wants to face. Anthony Joshua wants to give Delian White the title shot that he's been chasing for the last four years. That is the IBF, the WBA. Joshua says that he will fight White after he beats Kubrat Puli um, and Tyson Fury. As the WBC interim champion, White won't have a choice to fight him. We'll get to see how that pans out quickly. Let's move into something quite interesting. Tennis this time around. 15 years on, how media Monte Carlo wins spark Rafael Nadal breakthrough. Rafael Nadal celebrates the 15th year anniversary of his first Monte Carlo Masters title on Sunday, April 19. A victory which sparked a breakthrough season, a media Grand Slam triumph at Roland Garros and set the Spaniard on the road to becoming one of the sport's greatest 
player. Nadal was just 18 when he beat Guillermo Correa in the 2005 Monte Carlo final. Let's get to football. This time we're going to South Africa. Clubs in Rwanda temporarily fire players. The spread of coronavirus pandemic is affecting Rwanda football in addition to the suspension of the championship. This illness has uh, repercussion on the contracts of players playing in the first division championship. After Monzeni Football Club is in turn of Hope FC, another club involving in the Rwanda Elites to initiate the first major clause in the players' contract by temporarily dismissing them. The club justified this decision by impact of the crisis caused by coronavirus. Let's talk some football again. This time we're going straight to England. Newcastle set to lead the alternative Premier League table. Newcastle are closing in on a major takeover deal that could see them top the table for the wealthiest owner in the Premier League. Saudi Arabia Public Investment Fund, PIF, is looking to take over the back piece from Mike Ashley in a whopping £300 million deal transaction. It's quite interesting to know that money is the big maker when it comes to football. That's all we can take from the world of sport news right here. Back to my wonderful guest and analyst right here in the studio. Uh, gentlemen, Dr. Let me start with you. Um, when you look at certain issues, the way they've metamorphosed, the role the coronavirus has played has endangered everything. If you talk about contract, if you talk about emotion, and in Rwanda, it's becoming Either you like it or not, we're not asking you to go, but with the current pandemic, we just have to cancel your contract. Uh, well, like you said just now, talking about the situation the world at large is in as we speak. Uh, club across European continents that have to negotiate with their players and pay cuts, and uh, clubs across Europe that we tend to see seizing CZ, out how to actually put more money on getting fantastic players into their clubs, actually are not looking towards that direction owing to the fact that this pandemic that actually hits the world at large is really causing a whole lot of havoc on football at large. And uh, talking about the Rwanda Football League and what is, we are really uh, facing over there is the fact that these guys are actually looking for a means to balance the sheets. Oh. Okay, we need to balance what we have on ground. If we don't do that, definitely at the end of the day, what we are going to face as a football club it is either we go, we, we go into administration, and if we go into administration, definitely we will not be able to actually be part of the bigger league when it comes to playing league in Rwanda. But for, I know I don't like what is going on, but we just need to be sincere with ourselves. All of those things will still unfold as this our situation is around the world. It's quite a pathetic one, but what do you do? You have to go by what the world trend is right now. Stay safe. Still, routine football, Mark Pace, people know them as... Uh, the whipping baby right there in the EPL, Newcastle United, like you're fondly called. There's a takeover bid for 300 million mega pounds. Well, um, the English clubs actually vying for the Arab money, and uh, Newcastle United is no exception. Well, uh, over time we've seen where people from all over the world to buy different clubs in the EPL, which is not a bad one. Uh, yeah, the Arab taking over. Al Masoud, Man City. Um, I think we saw somebody from Roman Asia, Abramovich Odessa, for Abramovich from Russia. Yes. It's not a bad one. Big money coming into the game. The stakes are high. Players have to, you know, get paid properly. At the same time, we still expect more endorsements and all that. It's not a good. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good thing. But 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 it, it, would there be a time we'll, we'll see such transformation in our own league? We hope so. Maybe probably. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I, you never can tell. I mean, but. Um, by the grace of God, we're expecting it like that to come up sooner or later. No, no, before, God, before, God has to do with this. no before we well, could see yeah, something no, like we, that. We, we, still, we still want um, corporate bodies to come in. Individuals can also still come in. Because, um, well, does God have anything to do with this? You have somehow. to prepare yourself, you have to work hard, yes, you have to put have the to right tools in place. Hard. Exactly. We have to work very hard. At the same time, I think the, um, the, it, it has to be easy on, um, on the part of the FA. They have to give corporate bodies. I mean, like paying taxes and other things. Are we transparent? Bring them down. Are we transparent? We're getting there. Okay, Doctor, for you, I know you have a very darling club. Do you see Sunshine having a mega peace deal come to bear? Completely free of government intervention? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that, that's, you don't have that's to be deceived. Question. You don't have to actually think uh, this fact away from what is going on in Nigerian football. If you take a vivid look at it, English Premier League today, 
30 years ago, they were not the best when it comes to football league across the world. That is true. But over two decades ago, they actually went back to their drawing board and they said to themselves, what can we do to make our league the biggest brand in the world? And as we speak today, they are the biggest brand. I mean, and they did something right. I'm not comparing. No, 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 I'm not comparing. If we can put certain things in place, like you said, the tools and the man and everything, definitely in a couple of years, maybe in very near future, we are going to see people come with their money to say, we want to be part of this development. When the league is not developing, why will you expect people to come and put their money to a program that is not developing? All right. Are you going to invest your money into a pit? Definitely, you are not going to do that. Something, sometimes is a dream, and there is nothing wrong in dreaming. Just make sure you have the right um, foretold vision to get it done. Let's come back to the discourse right here in the studio. And first and foremost, a lot of people have given accolades, they've showered accolades on the 1994 set that has the enterprising Rashid Yakini, Sunday Lucy, JJ Okocha, Taribu West, you name them, Emeka Ziogu, and um, Peter Rufai as the best the country has ever produced. It will go on as a big discourse because if you look at what happened between the Red Devils in the 50s and 60s and you come back to the Green Eagles before the Super Eagles, you are grouped with that. The likes of Adukia Mesemaka, Shego Degwami, Aloysius Atwebu, and Chairman Christian Chuku are also veteran. Now, let me start with you, Joel. Uh, is 1994 the best set we've ever produced when it comes to football generation? Yes, uh, they are the best. It's, it's so obvious. The same squad won the cup in Tunisia. They won the Nations Cup in Tunisia. At the same time, that same squad qualified Nigeria for the for, I mean, first time in the, in the World Cup. We saw you saw the qualification in uh, Algeria. Played Algeria. It was 1-0. You know, the first time, I think George came out that score a uh, year ago. But that if, same I, if, squad, I coming, if I may come in, that same squad had some players that went to the Olympic and won the gold. Okay, if I may come in yes. before you continue. The 1980 squad did what no okay. other team has done. They won the Nations Cup. Mm -hmm. They also participated in all African games. Yeah. Um, they were very unique players in that particular squad. I, I, I still remember... Um, a fantastic Kishi player. He's still, he's still Steving, uh, living. Tenchuku and um, among them. and, and I think and yes. I think if you want to give it to any other person, she got to go and still a living legend. Yes, sir. Yes. So um, the basis for comparison yeah. is it the amount of trophies or participatory level they've gone into that makes them the best? Well, somehow it has to do with um, trophies, you know, and personal achievements also. Like '94 squad, almost. I mean, all the players were in Europe, playing top flight, regular starters in that club. And we saw the results. We, 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 saw the, we saw the results not just in the World Cup. Qualification for the World for the I mean for the Nations Cup. We won the Nations Cup. Qualification for the World Cup. And some of those players were part of the squad that went to 96 Olympic. And we saw what happened. For God's sake, this 94 best squad is the best. Okay. Doctor, let me come to you. Uh, there are a lot of basic criteria you want to put in perspective when you rate a team. For the 94 squad. Is it the best of generation that we've produced? Or we had players who were very good, but because they were not seen in the spotlight, they were not rated? Uh, well, let me just say like this. If you take a vivid look at the 1994 uh, national team, talking about the Super Eagles, they have a couple of fantastic players we have around. Many among them are managers now, uh, player managers and uh, coaches, what have you. But if you actually take a look at what happened with that team, you definitely disagree with Joel. Why I said you are going to disagree with him is this. If you look at it, that team had an opportunity to prepare for five years. They went to the Italian, they went to, they were there, they were unable to qualify for Italian 90. They went to the Nations Cup 1990, they went to the Nations Cup 1992. Remember, they got to the final 1990, they got to the semi final 1992 before they eventually won it in 1994. And if you look at what we've had, over the years, we've actually been presenting teams that get to the, either to the semi-final or to the final of the African Cup of Nations. If you check the history of African Cup of Nations, Nigeria has always been the third best team, even in recent time. And uh, the privilege this team had, none of the teams, aside the 1980 teams, ever had that kind of privilege they had. The privilege is, is the fact that they have opportunity to be... 1980, they have plenty of time together. Many among the players are from 1973, 1975 to 76, we were part of 1980 teams. Yeah. Even some among them were still there till 1984. But I'm talking about after 1994, Nigeria have actually, we've not had the team that played together for a long time. So are you simply saying years. that the set of 94 was the best? I'm not saying that. I'm disputing it. Because <laughs> if, you, if you look at it, we actually 
I say 1980 only for the fact that they did something that Nigerian national team have ever, uh, Nigerian national team uh, never achieved. Talking about winning the African Cup of Nations, being the first set of players that did that even on home soil here. And uh, if you look at the manner at which they did, you are actually going to say kudos to them. I'm saying this, and I, I don't need, uh, you know, I am, I own my opinion. The 1994 set, they are the best of sets, and they are the sets that actually had the opportunity to be played for five years, to stay together for five years. And still, they qualify for World Cup once, and they were unable to even scale the order of qualifying to the next talking about getting to the quarterfinal of the okay. tournament. All right. Uh, I, I, I think it's an ongoing discourse, which uh, f from us on the spot decks here on U45 Morning Show, we're going to set up a panel in uh, one of the morning shows and take your calls and probably uh, see who can put up a strong point of view and you might get a prize. Like I said, we're preparing to give out fantastic prizes out to you out there. Uh, if you are still within football, uh, one of our living legends, I call him a living legend because he's young but he has done it so well within different clubs. I'm talking about the person of Mikel Ebi. He's lending hands to people out there who can't really take care of themselves during this period of the coronavirus COVID-19. Now, uh, Joel, uh, we've seen players in Europe doing so much, and the expectation from our own players here in Africa is what can you give back? And Mikel is simply saying, I have this to do for humanity. Anyway, this is not the first time Mikel is doing something like this. Remember, he has a foundation started in Joss already, you know, giving arms to um, people around Joss area. But right now, he's coming out to do this, um, give um, crates of eggs to, I mean, to poor people. I mean, yeah, giving a crate of eggs to people, f I mean, in this um, But is that, is that a better justification? A lot of people need money in this period. And he just started. He's just giving out eggs. He, he's going to give out bread. Okay. Yeah. He's giving out bread eggs right and egg. Yes, to go along with it. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I want to ask that too. Um, if the players who had served this nation come together to put up a package, I saw what happened on Friday at um, Sulure Luka government where we had to speak to the chairman on certain issues as it concerns the palliative each local councils are giving. And to my greatest surprise, I discovered that the, the chairman himself, who is an ex-player, yes, was giving out to ex-players who can afford to feed Properly. I don't know what the package entails. We're still trying to do an underground investigation. We'll come on air to let our viewers know that. But for you, do you think it is proper, or it will be proper for a certain group of players to come together to give back to the society? Uh, yeah. Let me take a clue from uh, uh, the man that was here earlier during the uh, segment where we had a discussion. He said we can actually set up a plan whereby we can actually attain to people. I, I think the best we could actually do, all these players, you can actually come together, make a call to each other. Okay, I have $1,000, I have $2,000, I have $5,000. I'll bring them together and actually make it a point of duty in distributing it. Uh, that like organ getting set of people who understand how to distribute better. Because many among things we see around the corner is people going around to uh, throw food at people and all that and, and even lead to, and we are talking about social distancing. So if it can be properly planned, talking about the players, those that are playing currently, actually coming together to actually create a kind of synergy among themselves, contribute money, and actually distribute but it really more data. But, but the distribution means it's also important. Like um, what Tony Wakame is doing, he's also a player. He's in club with uh, Mikel Obi. You know, he sent lots of millions of naira to his friend Ghani. They are giving, they are giving to women, women on the street of Ajogila right now to speak. Personal I, friends I, or just generally? Generally. He does that a lot. Tony Wakame is, is always on, in, on the issue of the poor people. As, I, as we speak right now, they are giving 5,000 naira to women, I mean, thank you, children, you know, uh, poor people, widows, and all that, right now. Okay. We'll get to find out more about these palliatives as they come. Still, within the world of football, we're coming back home. The MPF says immediately after the coronavirus uh, issue is over, under eight weeks, the league will be running up. So certain promises are quite impossible. Uh, let me stick with you, Dotun. Eight weeks. Uh, uh, are we going to be having uh, matches round the period? O of course, I would say it is possible because what we get to see week in, week out. Considering our organization ability, uh, I, I have my doubts. Uh, uh, no, no, no. If you consider what we get to see week in, week out in Nigeria Professional Football League, sometimes we will have two, three games uh, during the week that the team that plays in Lagos today have to be in Abekuta tomorrow, have to be in 
uh, just a, a, a day after tomorrow, going to the fact that they use, uh, we play games during the midweek, which is not obtainable in European continents. They don't play league games. Because we've They're, put ourselves in that particular That position. is why I said we've it is ourselves. possible. It is something we've seen over the years. So if at all it's coming on board again, it is something we can achieve. Uh, we've actually programmed ourselves uh, to situations like that. If MFA uh, Football Club of Lagos plays here today in Lagos on Wednesday, on Monday, on Wednesday you see them playing against uh, Rangers International in Inugu, Inugu. and on, oh on the Saturday or Sunday again you see them back in Lagos playing against uh, a Yimba International. So it is something we've been seeing over but the years. is it possible? Mm -hmm. Of course weeks, I believe it's possible. And we'll have a definite chance. Of course. It won't be a bridge. No, no, it's I'm going to hold to you to your word. No, it okay. is possible. All right, still within football, we're talking much of football this morning. Uh, the Champions League. Uh, has been postponed right here in Africa, and the CAF says uh, the league, the Champions League, and the Corporation Cup finals uh, will be postponed. For you, Joel, I know uh, there are a lot of issues on ground logistically. Uh, globally, the pandemic is really ravishing so many countries. But is it very necessary to make a categorical statement of postponing the Champions League finals and um, the other finals, as the case may be. I think it's imperative for CAF to do this because, um, in as much as uh, we, we know the coronavirus pandemic is still on ground, and there's no fixed date, there's no date for you know this final, because there's a semi-final, there's a final. You know, you have a Horoya playing the Confederation Cup uh, final, you also have um, uh, this other team playing the final. There is no date. At the same time, they they don't just wake up and say they want to you know postpone these matches. They've made, they've, made a, they, they've had meetings with doctors, you know, advising them on uh, how to go, you know. So I think it's, it's okay postponing the, the match, but there's no date yet. Okay. But as time proceeds, we will expect a date. There's no date yet. I know a new date will come up because everybody is looking forward uh, into the post-COVID-19 um, post uh, issue. Dr. Let me quickly take you because time is on our side. The Premier League, it's obvious that they're itching to get a champion and they want to finish the 2019-2020 uh, 20 seasons and... Uh, Serious talk is ongoing. Uh, well, serious talk is ongoing. Uh, and even according to uh, the directives of uh, UEFA, uh, talking about uh, UEFA football ruling body, they actually uh, say to, them, to all the league uh, in Europe that they must conclude their league uh, at the end of uh, July, owing to the fact that they want to take the whole of August, July to, uh, the, to the whole of August to actually play uh, UEFA Champions League and Europa League. And if you look at the measure in which all of the uh, leagues are trying to actually seek is to consult their doctors uh, in their respective nations to actually ascertain what they are going to do. And Premier League, they are actually predicting on the, the weekend of 13th and 14th of June to actually start the league and uh, at least end the league by the end of uh, July so that they can actually have a credible winner. And uh, if I thought the league never ended, definitely Liverpool will not be winning the league. Not like what is obtainable in our own world here, where we never handed the league. Remember 2018, after FIFA World Cup, that we went into the Bruaha, that well, actually, and uh, so yeah. we never saw the end of the league, and the league was awarded to Rangers International. So the, all of this, they are not going to actually put in, into consideration. So they want to make sure they end the league. They say they are going to consult their doctors. Okay. If the doctors are consulted, they are going to give, give them their final verdict. Decision, decision, decision all over the world as it concerns moving forward. COVID-19 is the strong man holding us down, but sport must go on, and that is why we here on Super Screen Television, U45 Morning Show, we keep dishing out the very best in the world of sports, so don't touch that dial. Stick to Super Screen Television. We're on Star Time 173 and UHF 45. Gentlemen, thanks for coming in this morning. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, and we'll say much. a big thank you to those of you who have stick from 8 o'clock up till now watching U45 uh, Morning Show. Please do continue watch us every other day. That's all we can take on the spot decks till we meet on Wednesday. I say good morning.